To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like him. Well, if I want to be like him, that's going to mean things are going to have to change in my life. If you want to be like him, things will have to change in your life. It's not a matter of changing the shirt you're wearing or the shoes you're wearing or <coughs> changing your haircut. What is it has to change? What has to change about us? Is it the beard we have? Well, I don't have a beard, but when you read the historians, basically most of them agree Jesus had a beard. And so if I have to change so that I become more like him, then what is it that's in Jesus that people will see in me when I change? It'll have something to do with where I go. Jesus, he would go up into areas where he would pray. Or what I would do, he would go and he would help people and he would care for them and he would pray for them and they'd be healed. You see Jesus very active. Now one of the things I did years ago, I bought a cross and I put it around my neck here. It's very fascinating how many people who see that cross and they talk to me about it. It speaks about Jesus. And I want my life to be like it says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You see two things there, his blood, which was shed on the cross at Calvary and his righteousness, which is his lifestyle of living. And Jesus, he did so many things in life. So many things that spoke of love for people. And he loved the world so much that he gave his life on the cross. He loved the world so much that the world and seen and saved was the focus of what he did in life. What do we love? And what do we do to do what Jesus loves. For he forgave, you see him forgiving people constantly of the things that they had in their life. And even while he's hanging on the cross, <coughs> he's forgiving the people who are crucifying him. You see with Jesus, it's a fascinating thing when he sacrifices himself to be a servant for God. He laid down his life so that all who would come to him in faith might be saved. Well, are we like Jesus? Are we loving? Are we forgiving? Are we sacrificing self? What are we like? And what do we want from that relationship we have in him, with him, what we have with him? It's not just a physical look where we can say, well, we look like Jesus. It's something that flows out of the heart. Our heart is anchored in faith in Jesus, our Savior. We read our Bible and what it tells us is anchored in our heart. Or what we say or what we do are the things that Jesus would say or do. You read about it in the Bible many times about Jesus and his comments. You see that he said to his disciples that if they were to desire to come after him, in Matthew 16 it says they have to deny himself like he did, take up a cross and follow him. Now he said this long before he went to the cross. He said this before the disciples really understood about the cross. But he said, you have to deny yourself. It's pretty fundamental. It's a mindset where I'm not just out there to get rewards. I'm there to do something for Jesus. It's a mindset that says, I just don't want to be puffed up in the minds of people. 
I want people to see Jesus and honor him. And you see his comments often. In Matthew 16, verse 25, it tells us that if we desire to save our life, we lose it. And desire to lose our life may save it. But what's that really mean? <clears throat> I give my life to Jesus and I save it because I will live for all eternity in heaven because of what Jesus did for me. Or we pray not my will, but thine be done. That's what Jesus prayed. He said it wasn't what he wanted to go to the cross and be crucified, but if it's the will of God, he said, I will do it, thine be done. Are you committed to do the will of God above your own desires? Because not every desire that you will have will be a desire that comes from the will of God. You see some fascinating things that happened with the people who were his close followers, his disciples. You see, Peter, three times, he denied Jesus. You see it in Matthew 26. And he denied Jesus when asked. Here was a spiritual leader of the time who went against what Jesus wanted and went out and declared that he wasn't a follower of Jesus. Then he repented. And Jesus used him again. Sometimes people who have a spiritual walk with God don't do everything the way they should. Don't do everything in the way that it's the will of God for it to happen. And sometimes they do some things and the things they do, yes, they have to come back to God and ask for forgiveness. And yes, I find it fascinating when you see this, that Peter had denied Jesus but he came to Jesus and Jesus forgave him. If in your life and your walk with God, you find yourself sometime walking down a wrong path, you may have to turn to God and ask for his forgiveness. And when you ask him for forgiveness in the case of Peter, Jesus forgave him and used him again and anointed him again and blessed him again. Just because you come to Jesus and ask him to forgive you of your sins does not mean that you will never do something wrong again. But if you do, come back to Jesus. Remember he's loving and he's forgiving. Remember he cares about you and in his care for you he restores people who come to him and have messed up. He restores people who come to him and is an act of faith. They ask him to forgive them. Are you like Jesus? Sometimes people who like Jesus and have a love relationship with him need his forgiveness in their life again. Yes, he's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. The other thing you really see is he's a self-sacrificing servant of God. What does it mean for you or me to be self-sacrificing? It's not all about us. It's about him. It's not about all the things we receive. It's what we give. It's our having a life that honors him. It's our having a life that speaks in faith of that relationship with him. It's a life that says, Jesus is my savior. Jesus forgives me of my sin. Jesus has prepared a place for me in heaven and I will spend all eternity with him. Let that fill your heart and bring you peace. We're living in a crisis days that are just terrible. All over the place you see people going through all kinds of crisis.
crises in their life. They need Jesus. To walk through these days, what you need in the depth of your heart is the peace of God. The peace that passes all understanding. You see things that are happening all around you and you don't understand them all. But his peace passes it and comes and dwells you inside of you in the depth of your heart. Find his peace today. Find his love today. Find his forgiveness. And let these things be in you and you walk down a path and you project them to people and they will see Christ in you. They will see that you bring peace and you bring hope and you bring joy. And God can use you in a mighty way as you follow down the path that he has for you. Let's pray, Father. We just need your presence, your peace, your strength in these days. So much going all around us, going on, and we can't understand it all. Help us not to react. Help us to find what you have for us and walk in faith and be filled with your peace. Help us to know, Lord Jesus, that you are with us day by day and hour by hour. And when we mess up and fail, forgive us as we ask. Direct us in our path of righteousness and show us your will so that your will will be done on earth and in us as it is in heaven. Help us to know the will of God. Help us to seek the Lord as our Savior. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you, each one.